Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by plants. plants. Today, we bring to you episode 377, Exploring Food Combining with Tim James. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we talk with Tim James all about living foods and food combining. Food combining is not something that we've really studied, that we've really tried personally, or that we've done with any of our clients before, but we did think that this was a good concept for all of you to learn about so that you can continue your research and see if it's something that you're interested in. If you're someone who finds themselves asking if there could be more to your healing journey, you may find this very interesting. We know you'll love his four core secrets. So stay tuned to the end. Tim is the founder and CEO of ChemicalFreeBody.com, a mission-based organization that is passionate about helping everybody to ignite their highest excitement in life by putting themselves and their health first. Tim discovered a new way to view health and nutrition when he visited a world-renowned health institute that specialized in detoxing and nutrition with his best friend Charles, who was being treated for cancer. Ever since, Tim has been striving for optimal health and has completely transformed his life and body, dropping nearly 40 pounds and successfully treating his own health problems. When Charles was considered cancer-free after two years, Chemical Free Body was born with the mission to share the power in taking responsibility for one's own well-being. It's a transformational journey and individuals have to dig deep to find what works. Tim shares his knowledge with thousands of people to help them transform themselves. You're going to love this episode, so stay tuned. If you want a healthy, natural way to fuel your workouts or fire up your brain, Energy Bits are for you. Energy Bits are tiny spirulina algae tabs that are nutritionally dense, a source of mental and physical energy that is all natural and causes no stomach distress. They eliminate fatigue and hunger instantly with no caffeine, sugar, chemicals, gluten, or soy, just pure plant-based nutrition. One ingredient, one calorie, and zero net carbs. I use them before workouts or sometimes just as a snack. They make me feel great and give me that extra energy boost I'm sometimes looking for. I also use recovery bits, which are tiny chlorella tabs. I use them after workouts or when I'm feeling hungry late at night. Visit energybits.com and order energy bits, recovery bits, vitality bits, or skinny bits, and use the promo code PLANTTRAINERS to get 20 percent off your order at checkout. The link will also be in the show notes just in case you didn't get that all down. Improve your energy, wellness, and waistline all at the same time with Energy Bits. Check out Energy Bits today and feel the difference. Your brain and body will say thank you. And now for a moment of gratitude. Last weekend, we had a holiday called Yom Kippur. That's the Day of Atonement, when you say sorry for anything that you did that may have hurt someone's feelings or even something that you didn't do that would have made them feel even better. And it's just wonderful to go through that experience, have those conversations with the kids each year, and really have a day to start fresh. We've been volunteering at the Wishing Well Farm Sanctuary as a family, and it's been pretty awesome watching our kids interact with the animals and each other and taking on some responsibilities. It's been pretty awesome to watch it. Tim James, thank you so much for joining us on the Plant Trainers Podcast today. I am very happy to be here with you two to share our message and help those that are out there that are willing and open to listen. That's all it's about. It's about helping people, giving them information and letting them take it and roll with it and improve their quality of life. And before we get into that information, we wanted to know if you have a moment of gratitude to share with us and the listeners. Yeah, I had a moment of gratitude actually driving over back to my house this morning. I had some stuff to do and uh, a client called me because before 9 a.m. all the calls are forwarded to my cell phone so that we have good customer service. And um, I'm always answering stuff before and after. And this guy called me and they're farmers like I was growing up and his wife's got lupus. And I had a nice conversation with him and got him going in the right direction. And they're getting some products and, you know, and getting on our group coaching and everything. And I'm really excited because after I hung up that phone, he was just, he was so thankful. And he's like, I can't be on the group coaching tonight because I have to bail hay. <laughs> and I'm like, I know that, I know that life. You know, and I'm like, these are my people and I can, and I'm going to help them. I'm really going to help them to help themselves. 
you know, and help them get the foundation set up and get the body detoxed. And so I'm just so grateful that I literally have people calling me now and coming towards us and we can just serve and serve and serve. And, and I don't have to, you know, go looking for anybody anymore. It's kind of fun. It feels good to have people to help and to know that you're actually helping them. There, there's no better feeling than that. Yeah. And I told him I can't wait till they have good results. And then I want a photo of him on the tractor with the can of our greens. <laughs> 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 That'll be cool. So uh, you have a couple of before and after photos of yourself. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your health journey and how you found a plant-based diet? Yeah, so I actually grew up in eastern Oregon on a farm, which I mentioned, a cattle and hay farm. And, uh, you know, I lived on the standard American diet. Meat was uh, beyond a big thing for me. We had our own meat locker, meat saw, meat grinder. I mean, everything. I hunted and fished like all the time. Deer, elk, chuckers, pheasants, quail. I mean, That's all me and my buddies were doing. Like on the way to school, I would shoot pigeons as they would come out of the barn every morning. And it was was just, it's all we did. So the word vegetarian was even weird. We thought those people were really weird. You know, I didn't even know the word vegan or existed, you know? So what ended up happening was fast forward to age 37. I was 38 pounds overweight. I played baseball at a high level for 30 years, but I was just overweight. I wasn't feeling good. I was tired. I wasn't sleeping well. I had eczema on both of my elbows and my knee. For those of you that aren't aware of that, it sucks because it cracks and bleeds and it ruins shirts and people's couches. And it's just, it's embarrassing, you know, like you go to the beach or whatever, not just the big belly, but the bleeding, you know, all the time. Acid reflux, really bad. I was taking Tums and Rolaids like they were going out of style. I finally started bleeding rectally and that went on for a couple of years and I wasn't telling anybody pretty much almost every time I'd go to number two and I just wasn't feeling good. And then what happened was I went on a vacation and... I um, had to be pretty much life flighted to a hospital to get surgery, to have an emergency surgery, get my organ removed, an organ removed. And that's when I realized like, man, my life is, I'm really out of control here, but I still didn't know what to do. So shortly after that, a buddy of mine got diagnosed with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And he said, Hey, I, I, you know, they don't have a whole lot for me up here at OHSU, but I'm going to go try to heal myself naturally. So I'm going to go to this detox nutrition clinic in Florida called the Hippocrates Health Institute. And I want you to go with me. So I said, okay, whatever you need, man, you know, because I'd lost my grandma to brain cancer. I lost my aunt to skin cancer. Um, I had just lost a buddy on my baseball team at age 40 to uh, stomach cancer. And Clay was really healthy. I mean, he was healthy. He had three little boys from ages six to seventeen, and 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 and, and he did the chemo and the surgery and all that stuff, and, and it didn't work. And he died eighty pounds under his weight. So here I'm looking at my new my other buddy, and I'm like, wow, Charles ain't gonna make it, you know? Because my experience with cancer is you get it in your 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 toast. I mean, you die, and it's not pretty. Like taking my mom taking care of my aunt with that melanoma was horrible. It wasn't fun. And it was it was really hard watching Calais lose 80 pounds, you know, as he was dying and taking the morphine drips. So it scared me. It scared me a lot. So when Charles got it, I'm like, yeah, dude, whatever you need. But I thought he was a goner because of my experience. So we anyway, we January 1st, 2011, we fly to the Hippocrates Health Institute in West Palm Beach, Florida. And on the way there, Charles is like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's no meat, no dairy, no salt, no sugar, no vinegar, nothing cooked over 115 degrees. And I'm like, and I'm like, what? And I'm thinking, what am I going to eat? Like no meat? Like you guys have no idea. I, I kept five freezers full. My, like my buddy Sean and I were, we, my buddy Sean and I were like, um, like Robin Hoods. We'd go out in the middle of the night and shoot a deer and then give it out to all the baseball players because we're all eating top ramen, right? So I'm like, okay, Tim, just put your food stuff aside. They probably have salads. You're here. Your friend's got cancer for God's sakes. Just focus on him. So I did. And lo and behold, on day one, my acid and reflux was gone. I went through a healing process the first few days. They called it a healing crisis. You're basically doing surgery without a knife. And they simply just put us on a bunch of purified water, lemon and lime water, fresh green juices, living foods, sprouts, sprouted nuts, sprouted seeds, sprouted grains, sprouted beans. Everything was like alive, like a wild creature would eat. And you just start healing. And then by Wednesday, you can't even eat anything. You're so saturated with nutrition, you're not even hungry anymore. And I'm just like, wow, this is crazy. So, but I was feeling terrible. I actually had night sweats and I was very irritable on Wednesday night. And they said, usually Thursday by Thursday or Friday on the program, you'll wake up and feel much better. And I was praying and hoping that tomorrow was the day. And it was Thursday. I woke up and I felt amazing. Now, some people had it worse than me. Some people rashes were breaking out as their body was detoxing. People had parasites crawling out their pores. One lady had a parasite crawling out of her eye. 
you know, so what happened was, is I was living my life on a highly acid diet that was low oxygen. And that bring, what I learned is, is that brings in harmful organisms like viruses and bacteria and mold and yeast and fungus and these parasites. So what happened was, is that when you go to that place, they're changing your environment and your body. They're changing the body chemistry and they're making it high alkaline and high oxygen. So the bad guys pack their bags and they leave. And that's why these things, little critters are crawling out of people and people were urinating them and defecating them. And so it's, it's just a healing deal. So on Thursday, I woke up, I felt amazing. And, um, I looked at Charles and said, I'm going to do this with you. I said, I'm going to give up all the meat except for bacon and I'm going to do this with you. And then on the way home, I read the book, the China study. And after reading that, I'm like, I'm not doing meat at all. So, you know, I went hardcore into not just plant-based, but raw and even further living food. So I started growing about 80% of the food I was eating. And um, I still do that to this day. I grow a lot of sprouts and I sprout everything. So it's the good news was in a little over two and a half years, Charles was completely well of his cancer, this chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And he did no chemo, no radiations. There was no surgery. It was a blood cancer. And um, I healed myself. I lost the weight. My eczema cleared up. Both of my everything was healed up in about sixty days. It was really fast, except for my knee. That big patch of eczema, my knee took about eight months. And I just got inspired. I never looked back, and I quit my career as a financial advisor to um, tell people about you know living nutrition and detoxing. And, and now that's what I do for a living, and I'm I'm very passionate about it. And we have lots of people that we've helped do the same thing that we did. It's pretty amazing. Congratulations on getting to where you are, and your friend Charles as well. And it's funny that something must have been going on in 2011 because that's when I went through my transition, my transformation, got over my heart disease, my tumor started to shrink. And there's so many other people that we've spoken to that have found plant-based living around that same time. It's pretty mm-hmm. neat. You mentioned the term living food and living nutrition. Can you just clarify that for our listeners a little bit? Yeah, so it just means that it's alive. Now think about a, every creature on this planet, except for humans, eats a 100% raw and living food diet. That means they go out and it's like going out to a garden and grabbing a tomato and eating it on the spot. That's living food. And it's really, when you have living food, you get a whole another set of nutrition that's not in picked food that's been sitting there for weeks, right? So you get hormones, which allows the body to communicate better. That's the reason why a lot of people have issues with like Hashimoto's and thyroid issues. You have oxygen, which helps to boost, you know, your mental clarity and, and let your body burn calories more effectively. And it works as a good, one of the major, major components in the lymphatic system to detox the body and probably our number one nutrient because the byproduct of plants is oxygen and you get phytochemicals or phytonutrition. So these are, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of these plant chemicals or plant nutrients that have the ability to reverse and prevent disease. Um, Wheatgrass is an example. I think the last time I looked, Oregon State University was studying the phytochemical, one of the top phytochemical research places in the world, and they would counted over, I think, 74,000 chemicals in wheatgrass that can heal the body and prevent it. And then the last one is enzymes. Enzymes are kind of like a catalyst of life. They are the electric. They are the uh, the carrier of electric. So they actually charge your cells with electric. So we're electric beings, and when you bring enzymes into the body, not only do they help you digest food, but they actually work in all the processes and charge the cells. So I'll give you an example. The University of Berkeley in California took a head of lettuce, and they hooked it up to this machine that tested enzyme activity. They harvested the lettuce, waited you know half an hour, and tested it again. How much would you think the enzymes dropped in 30 minutes? It's about 52%. So half was gone. So think of, so think about this. They, if you pick a head of lettuce, a farmer, you got a big field out there, and then you put it in a storage thing for a day. The next day a big truck shows up. They put it on the truck. They fill the truck full of nitrogen, and they ship it You know, 1,500 to 2,500 miles on average. That's how far our veg- vegetables go and fruits. And then it shows up at the store. Then we go down, and we pick it up, and we throw it in the fridge, and then the next day we make a salad. Are there any enzymes in there? No. Hormones, oxygen, phytochemicals, most of that stuff, it just goes away. And it's there's still vitamins, minerals, and some trace minerals, but we're not getting that. It's actually a cool acronym, HOPE, H-O-P-E, HOPE, hormones, oxygen, phytochemicals, and enzymes. That's what you get from living foods. And when you put living foods in a living body, it works really well, and you're literally charging your cells. And that's why people at the Institute that have been on this program – they don't age like everybody else. I mean, there was the the first doctor I talked to, Dr. Scott. I mean, this guy was like a muscle-bound – he was just like – I couldn't even believe that he didn't eat meat. 
I couldn't believe it because like, I thought you had to eat meat to get muscle. So it was, like, my whole world got shattered. I was like upside down, bizarre. What, what? What? I mean, how could this guy have so many muscles and he looks so young? He just turned 50 when I asked him that question. How old are you? And I said, dude, I thought you were maybe 40. And then there was a nurse that was like 52 and I thought she was 35 maybe. Dr. Clement, who's been running the place, he's like 70 and he looks like he's 50. So your, your body won't age like everyone else. We're not supposed to be aging like like we're aging out there on the standard American diet. You put living foods into your life and get clean, and you too can join that club, and it's a lot of fun. I worked hard at this. I've been at it for 10 years, and I'm 47, and I have a lot of people that don't even think I'm – you know, they think I'm 30, and it's a lot of fun. And your skin, it's just awesome. Your skin looks good because if you have a healthy gut, then your skin's going to look good. And, and people don't realize that your skin is actually one of your organs. So if your skin is looking good, it means that your body's already taken care of all the internal organs and they're doing mm-hmm. well so that you could look good on the outside without all of those pharmaceutical help, of course. Yeah, absolutely. So talk to us a little bit about the depletion of nutrients in the soil and how that's affecting the food. Because, of course, once the food is harvested, we, we've established that there's less nutrients in it and less oxygen and all of these other things. But then what if it's just not there in the first place? Yeah, it's definitely not there. It's definitely not there. In fact, it was like it was around the 1930s. Congress was uh, I don't know if they passed an act. It was something I have to look it back up again. But they were it was like a national emergency because the soil depletion. It was so bad that people really needed to start supplementing. And today we're looking at around 85 percent of all nutrition that your body needs is farmed out of the soil. So if it's not in the soil, it's not going to be in the plant. And and if you eat the plant, you're going to be deficient. Or if the animal that you eat is eating that plant, then the animal's deficient, right? And then on top of it, like you said, pesticides, fungicides, herbicides, larvicides, chemical fertilizers, they put in these synthetic jobs. And this is why plants are weak. And that's why we're weak. We're actually de-evolving as a species because we're eating these weak foods. I mean, it's like literally running around on 15% octane. And what we teach people is how to top off the tank so you can be back at 100% octane in your fuel, right? So, I mean, in the 70s, as an example, you know, the, the kind of hippie type people were doing some good work and they were protesting all the spraying that was going on on apple orchards and orchards in general. And they were spraying these orchards like six to seven times a year with these toxic chemicals. And why? Because the soil had gotten so weak that the bugs, the trees had gotten weak and then the bugs could attack the tree because the tree's defenses were down because it didn't have the proper nutrition. So spray, spray, spray. Today we're spraying about 16 to 17 times a year on these crops, on these, on these trees. And they're missing the boat. Instead of going to the soil and remineralizing the soil with rock dust and permaculture and planting cover crops to bring the the nutrients up like alfalfa will send the roots down a hundred feet or so, or using like ionic ocean minerals that they could spray very easily. They just spray and they spray chemicals. So that's what we're teaching people. Don't be the tree that needs to be, you know, sprayed with chemicals, basically sprayed with toxins, sprayed with vaccines. You don't need to be sprayed with chemical supplements that the pharmaceutical companies make. You don't need all these problems. You just that are thrown on top of more problems. You just got to go to the root literally, and you just need to start flooding your body with nutrition, real nutrition that has a full spectrum and a full complex, and then your body will come back to life. I love that. Getting to the root. Exactly. It's a good pun mm-hmm. right there. So, but how how do people do that then? How do they get the nutrition from the foods that they think they are that they're not? How do they get around that? Yeah, there's two ways of doing it. Number one, you can you can learn how to grow your own food, and then you have to make sure that the seeds you are getting are grown in soils that are nutrient dense. All right, because if the seeds that you're planting are grown in nutrient depleted soils, if it wasn't in the seed, then it won't be in the plant. So key number one is that you have to get heirloom seeds and you have to work with the farmers and find the farmers that actually have that understand. You have to talk to them. How do you how do you what are your planting practices? How do you mineralize the soil? How do you keep soil nutrition up? And that's very quickly. You can find out whether you're going to get good seeds or not. So growing your own garden, growing sprouts inside the house 24 seven, 365 days a year like we do. That's one option. And for most people, they don't have that option. And then that's why as, as a coach, you know, I got through frustration trying to teach people how to juice and, you know, they buy a juicer and do it for a month and then the juicer would end up under the cover. We, we created a super concentrated green formula. We actually call it green 85 juice formula to replace that 85% of the nutrients missing in the soil. And it's very convenient because people are busy. So they can just take a scoop, shake it up, drink it in the morning and do another one in the afternoon. And they're completely replacing uh, what's missing in the soil. So supplementation today is not a luxury anymore. 
anymore. It's a necessity unless you're going to tend your own soil, make sure you have good seeds and grow your own food. Then you you just have to supplement today because it's just not in the food. That's unfortunate. And I speak to so many people who say, I just want to get everything from my food. I should be able to get everything from my food. And I was having, um, I guess, a bit of the debate with the B12 and the vitamin D with somebody from a while ago. And she's like, but I just want to get it in my food. And I'm like, well, if you're getting that in your food, it, it's fortified anyway. So you may as well make sure that you're getting it from a good source, right? And and our our idea of supplementation has changed a lot over the last 10 years because, because of the depletion of, of nutrients in, in the food that we're eating. But even if you don't supplement, you're still much better off eating the, the vegetables and the grains and the nuts and the seeds that are being grown as opposed to having the animal products in your diet and doing yeah. the best that you can and, and getting as much in and definitely staying away from fried foods and all of that. There's a significant difference on how your health can improve. And then if you if you need to, which a lot of us sometimes do, then then we add in what, what we need to add in. And But yeah, the results that people get are are definitely incredible. What do we need to know about combining foods? Which foods should be eaten together, shouldn't be eaten together? Or why don't we take a step back and just explain to the audience what combining foods really means? Yeah. So what we learned about proper food combining is just, these are not rules or something to be really strict about, but they're more just guidelines to follow. And what we're looking here is we want people to have good digestion and assimilation of nutrients. That's what we want. And so when you eat food, there's two processes that are going to happen depending on what you eat and how you, and what you eat it with. It's either going to digest and absorb, or it's going to ferment and and rot and then it putrefy. And then, cause your body has to get it out. Okay. And it's 98.6 and the body's going to be like, thank you for the food. And uh, this works good. I'm going to digest this and then I'm going to pass it through the system. I'm going to take the nutrients out of it and then exit out it goes. Or if it's mixed wrong, it's going to be like, well, I can't do much with this. It's going to be, it's going to rot and putrefy. And this is what I was doing with my, my lifestyle. Everything, almost everything I ate was I was doing improper food combining. And that's why I ended up with leaky gut syndrome because I was, that putrefication process was destroying my intestinal villi, all those little hair like structures that line the intestinal tract, which are basically the interface of your life force. I mean, the gut is the driving engine to your health. You have to take good, good care of that sucker. And um, I didn't know any about this stuff. And you can't see it. You know, that's why people don't know how to take care of it because nobody's been taught and you can't see what's going on in there. So the guidelines are this. They're very simple. The first one is to never mix a protein with a starchy carbohydrate, right? And what's the standard American diet? You have a hamburger and a bun, a protein and a starchy carb, or hamburger and french fries. Or if you're a vegan, it could be a nut butter sandwich, the nuts, the protein, and the, the, the bread, the starchy carb. The, that's the worst of all combinations. That covers about 50% of food combining. When you mix a protein with a starchy carbohydrate – you're going to create over 123 chemicals in the body, and one of them is sulfur. That's what that smell that comes out of us is. And you're going to destroy and cause gut rot and fermentation. So like what we do on our clients is like, you know, I had this one guy who was a CrossFit trainer. He, he was trying to get under 13% body fat, tried everything. It wasn't for a lack of working out. I mean, the guy was a personal trainer, high-performance CrossFit competitor, owned his own gym, and um, he was mixing his foods all wrong. So I just got him off of rice because we get people off of rice completely except for maybe some wild rice, put him on quinoa. And when he had the quinoa, we had him eat it with a lot of a lot of vegetables. If he was eating his meat, then we would have him eat it with a lot of vegetables, but not mix like meat and a sweet potato, right? And just by doing that, the gas and the bloating starts going away. So that's the biggest ones, never mixing a protein with a starchy carbohydrate. Next second one is don't mix vegetables with fruits. That's a big one. Fruits and vegetables require different enzymes to break them down. They also digest at different speeds. Fruits are going to digest in about a half an hour to an hour, and uh, vegetables are going to be about two to two and a half hours. So when you mix them together, you go right back to fermentation and gut rot. Now, there are some that go both ways. An avocado is a fruit vegetable. You can eat it with fruit or you can eat it with vegetable. And there's also garlic and onions and the edible flowers from the lily flower family. Those can also go both ways with vegetables and, 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 and fruits. But pretty much everything else, it just if you're going to eat fruit, eat fruit by itself. If you're going to eat vegetables, eat vegetables by itself. 
Okay. There's so much more great information coming your way. But before we get to that, we wanted to share with you and let you know that finding the right toque to keep your head warm with comfort and spreading the plant-based message isn't such a simple task. That's why we decided to put together a fantastic toque made from 100% organic cotton that does the job. Grab one of our plant power toques and enjoy comfort while supporting and spreading the message of eating more plants. Check it out at planttrainers.com slash shop to get yours now. And now back to the show. Another one is fruit itself. There's different types of fruit. You have acid fruit, sub-acid fruit, and you have sweet fruit. So acid fruits would be things like oranges, lemons, limes, tangerines, grapefruits, these types of things. Sub-acid would be peaches, pears, plums, apricots, that kind of stuff. And then you would have the sweet fruit would be like bananas or dried fruit. These are the ones that have the highest sugar amount. And these are the ones that we recommend people stay away from the most because of the high sugar content, unless you're like a high-level athlete and you're burning that stuff off. Because we know that sugar feeds disease, period. And so if you're going to, you know, in all fruit in general, um, people have to understand that fruit today has been hybrid so much it's 30 to 50 times sweeter than its natural origin. So you're getting a tremendous amount of sweetness out of fruit because, you know, think about it. When you're driving by a fruit stand, if it said sour apples, you're going to pull in there? <laughs> Probably not. But if it says, you know, sweet melons, you're oh, let's get a melon for for the barbecue tonight and you pull on and grab the big sweet watermelon who doesn't like that right so understanding of the hybridization and the amount of sugar in fruits but then also if you're going to have fruit eat it if you're going to have you know oranges just eat oranges or if you're going to have plums just eat plums or if you're going to have a banana just eat a banana but don't mix those things maybe you can do it for you know celebrations weddings but just just keep it to a minimal and then the last one would be uh, melons if you're going to have melons just eat them alone that's it don't eat them with anything else. They digest the fastest. They take about 15 to 30 minutes. And, you know, barbecues, what do you do? You have a big – people have big hamburgers or a big veggie burger, and then at the end they go have a watermelon. That's a terrible thing to do because the, the, what, the best way to explain it is like the digestive tract highway is a one-lane highway, and it's about an inch long. And it goes from point A, your mouth, to point Z, your rectum. And if – let's say you come in and you have a nut butter uh, – uh, like a nut butter sandwich at this barbecue or a burger or whatever – and that's like a semi truck pulling up to the digestive highway. And you're sitting there going, well, hey, where are you going? Well, I'm going to go down the digestive track highway. How long is it going to take? Oh, it's going to take me about four hours. All right, see you later. Have a good time. Off goes this big truck, this big semi, nice and slow. Now, about 10 minutes later, here comes Mrs. Melon because you decided to have some watermelon. Zoom, she comes in in her Corvette, the top's down, hair's flowing. Where are you going, Mrs. Mellon? Oh, I'm going down the digestive tract highway. Well, how long is it going to take you? About 15, 30 minutes. All right, have a good time. See you later. Zoom. And somewhere between point A and point Z, that car, that, that uh, Corvette is going to slam into the back of that truck, and that's where digestion stops and fermentation begins. So it's the, it's, not only, it's the speed. We have to also think about the speed. So it would make more sense to have the melon first. And then 15, 20, 30 minutes later, then have your heavy meal, and then you won't have all this gas and bloating and fermentation and gut rot and end up with leaky gut like I did. So what about salad? Where would a green salad go? Because I know in Europe they tend to eat their salad at the end of the meal instead of before the meal. Uh, well, a green salad, I would what, – what, what else are they eating? They're starchy. They're – their starchy protein meal, I guess. Okay. Right? They go like well, like in Italy, they'll go by they'll go by stages, and I've always wondered why the salad. I don't know if you know why the salad goes last. So they'll have their like first plate, which will be a pasta. Then they'll have their second plate, which will be a protein, and then they'll have their third plate, which will be a salad. Does that make any yeah, sense improper, in terms it's, of? It's, no, it's yeah. no, it's improper food combining. Yeah. So if you're gonna have a salad, you can have that starchy carb with it. If you're gonna have meat your protein you can have the, the 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 vegetables with it but you just don't want to mix the proteins and the starchy carbs so and, and the starchy carbs would include that potato as well that went into sure. include as a, yeah potatoes right. sweet potatoes yams noodles that kind of stuff even if it's gluten-free even <laughs> that means right. we got to stop having our sweet potato with black beans and salsa and nutritional yeast are, yeah, be, are need, beans protein or are beans starchy? Because they're starchy on their own too. So where where would beans fit in? Yeah, well, first off, I believe that beans need to be soaked first. In fact, any nut, seed, grain, or bean needs to be soaked. You guys were talking earlier about wanting to get nutrition into people. 
right? How can they do it? Well, on a budget, especially soak your nuts, soak your beans, soak your grains. They, they become on average about eight times more digestible. And how many of us have digestive tract issues today? And the nutritional factors go up about a hundred to 800%. I mean, it's significant amounts of nutrition because you take a dormant bean as an example, and this is where people are having issues. They're like, you know, paleo's against it. And like Dr. Gundry's against beans and all that stuff. Like, but, you know, because the lectins and all that stuff. But if you soak that bean in water and sprout it first, those lectins go away, most of them. And then especially if you cook it, they're gone. So these beans are one of the most powerful powerhouses of nutrition that you could possibly put into your body. They almost resemble the matrix of mother's milk. If you look at mother's milk, as far as the high quality amino acids, the high quality fatty acids and the starches that are in the, and the carbohydrates that are in there, it's it, beans are very close to mother's milk. And this has been used for Olympic level athletes for a long time. And you're soaking the seeds as well, so the chia seeds and the hemp parts and the all of those things. Hemp, and can, quinoa, not hemp, hemp, hemp. You don't soak, but quinoa you definitely want to at least rinse off because there's these things called saponins on quinoa that are actually there's good saponins and bad ones. The ones on quinoa are bad; they will actually eat your intestinal lining. So over time, so you definitely just want to rinse them off once or twice. That'll take care of them. But even better, soak them for four to six hours. You know, so the smaller the seed, it doesn't take as long. Chia is really quick. I mean, 10, 15 minutes, they're ready to eat. Whereas uh, an almond or a walnut could take, you know, you want to soak that sucker for about 8 to 12 hours and then rinse it all off, you know, and then consume it or dehydrate it over a couple of days under 115 degrees and then you have it for long-term storage. So some of this information that we're talking about today, I haven't, I haven't researched myself. And so some of, some of the big juicy questions I might not have, or maybe I have them because I haven't necessarily researched myself, but there's people out there for sure listening now who are saying, I eat my veggie burger with a bun and, you know, I'll have half a watermelon along with my barbecue dinner or whatever it is. And I feel fine. Does that mean that everybody now needs to throw their hands in the air and go running in circles and and start doing everything? Or are we just saying that people who are not getting the results that they think that they should be getting on a plant-based diet, if they make these small changes, can have absolute crazy results? And or are we saying these people who do feel good will be getting more nutrition into their body because the body will be absorbing it more and will be creating less fermentation within the body. Yeah. I think anytime people make changes, it's, you have to do it from a place of love. You have to be loving yourself. Like I don't eat perfect. Sometimes I'm like, I'm doing improper food combining tonight, you know? (laughs) So it's like, I know it. I'll just take extra digestive enzymes. But when I do stuff like that, I really focus and be very grateful and know that my body's going to handle it and that kind of stuff. So the people out there listening, I'm not saying you, you know, th- scrap everything you've ever, the way you're eating and everything, but just if, if you feel like you want to try it out, maybe you're like, maybe you want to improve your digestion a little bit, or maybe you want to try to feel a little bit better. If you think everything's fine, then just stay there. You know, that's okay. Um, but there's a lot of people out there that are having gas and bloating and fermentation, or they're just not feeling good. And it's really hard to heal the gut when there's fermentation going on. It's just not, it's not conducive a healing environment. It creates an acid-based environment, gas and bloating. So for those people struggling that want to get better, like proper food combining, that's why I made it a big deal and I, I teach a class on it. It's that important. It's foundational. So trying to heal with a fermented gut is not, it's like taking a step forward and two steps back basically as far as I'm concerned. And it's so simple. It's so simple. Just to, you know, you can still eat the same foods, just eat them at, You know, if you're going to have, if you love eating sweet potatoes, then eat them with a bunch of vegetables. Just don't have a nut butter with them or whatever. You know what I mean? So what about a nut butter with banana? That would be a fruit. kind of starchy and and sugary. protein. Yeah. Well, when you, yeah, when you mix, uh, well, first off, it's the sugars and stuff. But with a nut, that would be a protein and a fat with a sugar. So that really wasn't, I mean, probably the best thing to do is just try it out. I mean, you could do it, but I would recommend again, if you to, to not do the bananas, unless you're like really, really active. And then once you're well, then you can go back and like, that's what we say. Cause I deal with a lot of people, a third of my clients are cancer patients. So I'm coming from a different perspective. Another third are high level athletes. They're trying to really improve. And then a third are people just wanting to lose weight or look younger and that kind of stuff. So I always come from a real powerful point of really trying to help people that are healing that are, you know, having issues. So I, I just, we, we just, 
we just try to get, you know, we try to get the sugar out as much as possible. I mean, I looked at the molecule structure of sugar and it's almost identical to cocaine. I mean, if you look at the molecular structure, if you guys have ever seen that, yeah. and it's about yeah. three times more addictive. So it just feeds all disease and it causes problems. So, you know, we just, we just try to get people off of that kind of stuff as much as we can. So if somebody wants to research this more and see some of the good research that's out there, where can they look? They have more information at the Hippocrates Health Institute. You know, that's where I actually started learning it from the very beginning. Um, or they could just research, you know, Google proper food combining. Um, I also shot a on my podcast, The Health Hero Show. I have a whole episode on there about proper food combining, and I go into de- deep detail on it. So that would be another place. So you told us earlier that you had some big secrets that you wanted to share with our audience. So you have four core (laughs) secrets. Uh, Maybe you could share those with us. That'd be great. Yeah. So these got developed because um, I had, you know, thousands of people coming over to my house for these living food classes and juicing classes and they'd get all excited and they would, you know, I how did you do this, Tim? I'm like, well, I bought a juicer and I started growing these sprouts and I started juicing twice a day and then I got all excited and they were feeling good and like, I'm doing it. And then, like I said, about a month, two months later, the juicer's under the cupboard because they got to clean the juicer. You know, it's a 45 minute process, especially in the beginning. I can do it like 15 minutes now because I'm good at it. But the beginning, it's like 45 minutes. It's an ordeal. Right. And a lot of people just didn't have time. So they said, Tim, I need why aren't you doing this? And they said, I need something simple. I need a plan. So I went back home. and I'm like, what could I share with people that would produce the most results, take the least amount of effort? We came up with three things originally. We added one more. The first one. And less than 5% of the population is doing this, is drinking enough water. So we recommend half your body weight in liquid ounces of purified water. And if you live in the city, then your water needs to be restructured because the the high-pressure pipes in the city coagulate these water molecules. They make them so that they just – they won't go through the intestinal line that well. So you drink a lot of water and you're just peeing it out. Once – if you're on city water, you get restructured water. Oh, my God. It just disappears. And then it comes out later, about two, three hours later, and then you pee a lot. So we know it's working much better. So if you're a 200-pound person, that'd be 100 ounces a day. If you're a 100-pound person, that would uh, be 50 ounces a day. If you're a high-level athlete or live in an arid climate, you'd probably bump that up about 20, 25% more. I had one lady that did that one thing, and she dropped 50 pounds in eight months simply by adding water to her life. You know, her, your body's mostly made of it. Less than 5% of people are doing it. So there's a big opportunity here for the people listening that aren't drinking water. Your life's going to change big time. Your mental clarity is going to improve. Um, Not having enough water is the difference between finding your car keys or hunting around for them for 10, 15 minutes. It's a big difference. And your digestive tract definitely needs it. And the Royal Society of Medicine said that 85% of all disease starts in the colon. And I totally believe that. And if you're not drinking enough water and your body's dehydrated, where's the first place your body goes to get water? Well, it's the colon. So that's where this, all this buildup starts happening. And that's why the average person has about six to 12 pounds of fecal material mucoid plaques build up in the intestinal tract. So drinking water is a big deal. Okay. Number two, core secret number two, less than 4% of people are doing this and that's chewing your food until liquefied. This is a major advancement in technology. (laughs) You have these teeth, right? And all you got to do is like chew your food really well. Most people are just engulfing their food like I used to. And it's the first domino in digestion. You have two ducts in your upper mouth and four in your lower mouth that secrete these enzymes, amylase and lipase. These break down your starches and your fats. And if you don't preload your food with that so that those starch, those those digestive enzymes can go go into your gut and break your starches and your fats down, you're going to have fermentation and gut rot. And another benefit of chewing your food is that I learned this from Dr. Gabriel Cousins, who's like 80 years old and can do like 30 pull-ups. The guy's amazing. You guys probably know him, right? If you, yeah, yeah you get, have you had him on your show? No, not yet. Yeah, you should. He's 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 like you know living proof of what, what's possible, and he's super living fooder. He eats everything living. So he said that when your meridian points on the teeth are, are hitting and you're chewing your food well, you can actually boost up your serotonin by up to 500 percent. The happy juice. Like how many people are depressed today? So just by chewing your food more, you're going to be happier. You're going to digest your food better. Of course, secret number three is now that you're chewing your food really well and you've preloaded with all these enzymes, avoiding liquids with meals. Less than 2% of the population is doing this. So when you, if you drink, even if it's purified, restructured water or a wine or a beer or apple juice, organic, it doesn't matter. Those enzymes, now that you've chewed them really well and they're in your stomach, if you drink liquids, you dilute them and you go back to fermentation and back to gut rot. And we don't want that. So for beginners, stop drinking liquids if you want to, half an hour before you eat, and then start drinking liquids again one hour after you eat. 
And if you're stage four something or Olympic level athlete, then we tell people stop drinking liquids an hour before and then wait two hours after you eat and then drink a lot of liquids again. And then the last secret is core secret number four, and less than 1% of the population is doing this, and that's to simply take a moment and do some breath exercises just for a minute or two before you eat. Because we live, well, would you guys agree we live in a stressed out lifestyle today? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, before COVID hits, you know, you still have, you know, mom and dad's both going to work and kids and taking care of parents. And, you know, there's autistic children, high needs ch- children, and just there's a financial stress. There's just so much. 74% of people don't like the job they're in. And then throw COVID on top of it. Okay. There's a lot of stress going on. Your body doesn't know the difference. It's like, it feels like the, you don't think you're stressed, but there's a saber tooth tiger chasing you. So the blood leaves the organ systems and it goes out to the extremities to fight or flight and you're not going to get good digestion. So simply by being mindful and taking some deep breaths in through the nose, out through the mouth or however you want to do it, just taking a moment and calming down, the blood will rush back into the digestive tract and now you can digest your food really well and not have that fermentation and gut rot. And I promise those of you listening, if you learn to stack these four things together in your life, it's going to make a huge impact on your gut health and your overall health and your happiness and it really works don't seem to be too difficult so i don't know why more people are not doing it maybe they just don't know about these things right yeah well sometimes you know your mom says chew your food you're like i ain't doing it you know (laughs) or you're so hungry from your stressed out life that you're literally swallowing every bite Right. Yeah, and you forget. So what we do, like people pay me a lot of money to coach them one-on-one. And the first onboarding call, what we do is I have them pull out their phone and program these things into their phone so they don't forget. So at lunchtime, it'll say chew food, avoid liquids, breath, probiotics, enzymes. And then every day they get hit with that. And within three to four months, we've programmed the subconscious mind and they have a hard time forgetting it. So that's it. Television programming, they call it, they, we're programming us so we, we can use that to our own benefit and program ourselves. And you can use this for anything. You want to play the guitar? Reminder, call mom. Yeah, all these things you want to do, you can just uh, program it into your phone and let it train you. Amazing. Very fascinating information. This is, it's all, this is why we do the show, so that we can learn things from our guests. So thank you for sharing all that with us. For our listeners who want to reach out and connect with you, where would be the best place for them to go? The best place is probably just our website, chemicalfreebody.com. And I put together a discount code for you guys. It's just plant trainers. Thank you. So if you guys uh, want to try out some of our, our products, they're they're real food. They're raw. They're wild crafted. There's no slave labor. Everything's hand harvested and air dried or sun dried under 110 degrees. And we have detox and nutrition products. And we have these things called savings bundles for people to start off with if they, they're not sure. And, and we're happy to do consults, free consults to anybody at any time if they need further help. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much. I'm sure the audience will appreciate that a lot. We're so grateful for your time today. Yeah, thank you. We're going to put those links in our show notes at planttrainers.com so people could find you and get that discount code and check out your products. So thank you so much, Tim, for joining us on the Plant Trainers podcast. We really do appreciate your time. Hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate you guys having me on. And um, I like your shirt. Thank you. (laughs) Training for life. That's right. Always always. training for life. Yeah. Yeah. And I can tell you guys are healthy. You guys have really good skin and you're happy and you got the two smiles going and uh, congratulations on your podcast and your relationship and your health. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant trainers. Even supporting us with one dollar really makes a difference in the quality of the show and don't forget to connect with us on instagram and twitter our handle is at plant trainers like plant trainers on facebook join our newsletter and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes a list of our services and of course our latest podcast we encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness so we hope we've inspired you today join us again next time And and have have a a healthy healthy day. day. Or is that too corny? It's a little cheesy.